Welcome to the Best Hopes Podcast. My name is Adam Froer. And I'm Cecil Walker. And this episode will be the season finale of the Best Hopes Podcast. Cecil, what do you make of this being the final episode? I wonder what happened to all the rest of the episodes. (laughs) Why so fast? I feel like it should be something big and exciting, but I don't know. (laughs) How do we make fireworks go off on this? I guess we'll have to see if we can do it. I'm relying on you. You're the fireworks guy. Uh, I didn't realize that was (laughs) under my job description. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going to do our final slice. We're going to stay true to the slices of hope. And we're going to do the final slice of hope. There probably are more slices that we could consider, but we're out of season. so, So this is the final slice we'll consider. And today, the the topic or the slice of hope that we're going to consider is purpose. And as always, there are some synonyms that go along with the word of the day. And so the synonyms for purpose are things like destination, direction, the function or intent, the mission, the plan, the point, or my personal favorite is the whole idea, the whole idea of this thing, which I think is kind of a fitting place for us to end this season of the podcast is in some sense, like, what's the point of all of this? Mm -hmm. And so as you hear this idea of purpose, as you hear this idea of the point, the intent, the whole idea, Mm -hmm. what comes to your mind around what we should make sure to consider? I guess... A lot of things ran through my head and a lot of it, I think we touched on. So I guess this is a a great season finale because it feels like it scoops up almost all of our past conversations and makes those extremely relevant to this at the same time. But without repeating too much of that stuff, purpose sounds like something very orienting. Like it says, this is the way I want to live. This is the reason for all of this stuff. And with something that big and that meaningful, that significant, I don't think we've described any of these slices so far yet, but it feels like it gives meaning to everything that you do. So if I say, I, if I want purpose and this particular kind of purpose, and I want to live a life that's purposeful in that kind of a way, now everything that I do is oriented around that, but also has some type of meaning in regard to that. But I think even more important than those things in this plenty of things to say about that. So maybe we'll get into it eventually. But even more important than those things, it's striking me how unconditional when you were saying all of those different variations of what purpose means, how unconditional it is, because if I have that kind of purpose, if I'm working with that kind of purpose or towards that kind of purpose, it doesn't matter. My reason for it all, my why behind everything, my purpose doesn't change. Even if I'm at the day of really big achievement in something towards that, or I'm in a day where it feels like I just, for some reason, I'm really down and I can't give a lot, or I'm making a lot of mistakes, or I'm really disappointed in myself, or it's just really hard for some reason. There's a lot of obstacles popping up. The purpose doesn't change. That's not how it works. It's something I'm going to constantly be directing towards, but maybe my distance to that feels like it's changing or maybe the difficulty with how I access that or feel like I'm embodying that might be changing. But the purpose itself is unconditional if it's really something meaningful that you're aligning yourself with. And obviously, I think that speaks to a lot of the things we've talked about, like ambition and and all these like things you just kind of hit yourself to. But it sounds like with purpose, there's something much more like it creates meaning out of the moments that you're in, regardless of how close or far away you are to it. Yeah, I really like the idea of this kind of adds the meaning, I would say this like puts meat on the bones. Mm -hmm. Because I think in some sense, like if we go back to some of those other versions of hope that we talked about before, right, we talked about like dreaming. And when you mix or you combine a dream with the purpose, what's the purpose of the dream? All of a sudden, the dream becomes really important, becomes really meaningful, it becomes really impactful. When you put ambition, blind ambition is just like useless energy going out. But when you combine it with like, this is purposeful ambition, Mm -hmm. there's a point to this, there's an intent, there's a plan for this ambition. Now, all that effort becomes meaningful effort, not just 
useless effort. When I think about things like intention, right? I know you and I oftentimes talk about like, be intentional, Mm -hmm. be thoughtful about what you do. But underlying that intention is like, how come? Like, for what? Like, it lends like this extra layer of meaning to all of the things that we've been talking about. And in some sense, I can't help but think like so much now in like pop culture and those kinds of things, you hear things like know your why and purpose kind of gets at that. Like if you have purpose, if you do things deliberately, if you have a plan, if you have this forethought, everything else that comes after it changes. You could exert the same amount of effort, but now it's meaningful effort versus just fruitless effort. Mm -hmm. I really think you're right of like the meaning really gets highlighted when we say, there's purpose in what you're hoping for. Yeah, I mean, that feels synonymous with purpose to me, that meaning would just be kind of deeply embedded in that and saturated and that they kind of feed each other. If I've defined some type of purpose and shoot for some type of purpose, I can create much more meaning, much more deeper levels of meaning. But then the things that are meaningful too, I could find purpose in. I could, you know, so I think they feed each other in that kind of a way. But the thing that I always kind of, use as an example of purposefulness. And I should also maybe highlight that, you know, maybe I have my own bias here because I feel like the best kind of life anyone could live is a a life with purpose. I want to live on purpose and not by accident. I don't want to look behind me and see, you know, weeks, months, years, whatever has gone by. And I, oh, I wasn't as whatever as I might have wanted to be. I didn't make the choices in this kind of a way as I wanted to I'd rather be in front of a lot of things and say, here's how I want to approach these things, or here's who I want to be as I go through these things, rather than have those things behind me and feel like, oh, now I have a sense of purpose that I wish I could have implied, you know, back then. But with that disclaimer (laughs) said, the example I always think of is like, if you're watching a movie or any work of art, really, you know, it could be a song, it could be a, a play, a book, anything, it should be purposeful. It should be like every piece of something put in that thing was put in there on purpose for some reason, either to contribute to a message, to make it more aesthetically pleasing. For some reason, all those things have to go in there. And I think it's really obvious with movies because we're looking at a box. The screen you're looking at is just one very limited view of something. Everything you're hearing is one limited range of things that you could hear for a specific instance. And so there has to be a decision about all the things you're going to hear and see. And it also has to have some connection to what do I want the person hearing and seeing this to think or to feel or to notice or to not notice even. And so if someone is really, really good at their job, the people who make those movies, the people who write the music for those movies, the people who act in those movies, they're all doing what they do with purpose. And that purpose has to reach every tiny detail of everything that they're doing. You can't say I'm trying to make a movie uh, that is scary, but also realistic. And it's set in this, you know, olden time period from the early 1500s or something. And then you have a Starbucks cup like sitting on the, on the table while they're having a conversation. Because then it's like, well, if you were really trying to do that and you were trying to make something meaningful happen and you were trying to make this movie to the best of your ability, there are some mistakes. It didn't seem like that Starbucks cup is purposeful. If it is, you'd have to really explain that to me, why that is purposeful. But my assumption would be that's not purposeful and it subtracts from how good this could be. And I would say the same thing about life. If there's pieces of it, elements of it, moments of it, or even an entirety to it that is purposeless, then it's not as good as it could be. You're not going to be as pleased with it or even as proud of it as as you could be. Yeah. I think one of the things that you're really highlighting, which I think is important, is I guess I'll boil it down to like intent versus impact, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think oftentimes when we think about hope, we think about like, what impact do I want to have? Like, what's the outcome? And even in the work that we do, we say like, what are your best hopes? And I think oftentimes people hear it as like this impactful thing at the end. And I think you're kind of flipping that on its head a little bit. And you're saying like, there in order to get to that impact, I have to be really intentional about the intent. Mm-hmm. I guess intentional is, <laughs> is you, I have to simply be intentional, right? And I think when you get at some of these 
variables or some of the terms that go along with purpose on the surface, they don't really like match like plan. And when I think like plan on one level is like, I'm trying to lay this out. Like, how is it mm-hmm. going to happen? But on the other hand, you could say like, I'm banking on this, like I'm expecting this. And I think they actually go hand in hand that if I lay this out, if I describe the details, if I, whatever, then I can bank on it. Then I can expect it. I can grow toward it. I think about other synonyms that we talked about before of like the direction. And again, it could be like, you're just moving in this way, or it could be like a compass. It's pointing the direction. It's telling you which way to go. It's not like I'm just aimlessly wandering in this general vicinity, but it gives specificity. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we think about purpose. I guess the other thing that stands out to me about purpose is um, that we can't, on the one hand, we have to be really thoughtful and try to figure out like, what is the purpose of this? What is my purpose? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to show? And on the other hand, I think we have to let purpose evolve and kind of unfold itself. And so I guess that's my question is, as you kind of think about like, if I have so much intention that I become inflexible, Mm -hmm that could eliminate possibilities for me. And so how do you like hone in on what is purposeful? How do you hone in on like, this is within my purpose without becoming so rigid Mm -hmm. that it's, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna see any possibilities that are out there except for this. Well, first of all, you beat me to it. I was about to ask you a question, so. (laughs) 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 <laughs> you stole my chance, but hopefully I, I could hold out to it and remember it later. <laughs> That's a great question because it's made me think of some things that as much thinking about purpose as I've done, I don't know if I've made this specific distinction, but I think there's a huge difference between purpose and perfection because to me, for me, purpose isn't just creating an ideal or just making an image of here's the perfect being that I want to be or the perfect way that I want to move through the life, move through life. Maybe that exemplifies, you know, the meaningful things that that you're trying to hold on to. But that doesn't have to be like, that's the goal. That's the thing I'm trying to make it to. Like, it's very relative, like that could hold some meaning for some people. But achieving the perfected image of that is very, very different than living with the purpose of, you know, I want to be this kind of a person or I want to live this kind of a life. If I say I want to be my most generous self, but there's just times where I don't have much to give or I'm forgetful and I'm just so stressed and I forgot to bring my generous self. I, I wasn't as flexible with people or as generous as I could have been with people. I wasn't as open and kind. I didn't think of possibilities of how I could, you know, use what I have or give what I have. And I feel like even though I went through that moment or that week or whatever, that time period with the heart of I'm still working on trying to be as generous a person as possible, I fell short of achieving that in some way. And I think that I could still say I was living with purpose, even as I was falling short. And I think that shows there's a huge difference between are you achieving this perfect ideal of something or are you living with the purpose that might be behind that ideal? The same way that people say, you know, I want to be, you know, this super fit person who goes to the gym all these times and eats super healthy. Or I want to be this financially savvy person who is saving money, and investing money and things like that. You could live with the purpose that's Im- imbued in those things, even as you're working toward those things, because no one can instantly start as the I'm 100 percent fit and healthy and have all these savvy investments and all those things. You have to kind of work your way there and manage and build yourself up. So you could live fully within that purpose as you're navigating towards those things and as you're facing the setbacks along the way. So I think that's, there's a a really important distinction there that kind of helps define those. Yeah, I love that actually. I, like you said, I don't know if I've kind of made that distinction before, but I think holding on to, there's a difference between purpose and perfection when we layer hope back on Mm -hmm. there, right? I think that's, in some sense, living hopefully Mm. doesn't mean that I've secured it, that I've achieved it, that I am perfect. It's not final accomplishment. Living hopefully is making decisions today that are intentional, that are in line with where I want to be, consistent with my dream, that are according to the plan that I've laid out. 
And so it guides my behavior, it guides my intentions, it guides my actions, but it doesn't mean I've accomplished it or it doesn't mean that I'm perfect. It doesn't mean that I have arrived at that thing yet. And I think one of the things that holding on to that distinction makes is that it really separates a goal mm -hmm. from what we call the best hopes, right? A goal is like something that be, that is accomplishable. I could lose 30 pounds. I could run a marathon. I could read a book that I want to read. I could, there's something really achievable. And I think what we're getting at in some sense is purpose and hope are in some sense unlimited. Mm -hmm. If I'm pursuing happiness, there's always more ways that I could be happy. There's more opportunities for happiness to enter my life. If I take that idea of like, I want to run a marathon and it's like, what's the purpose of running a marathon? Maybe it's to be fit. Maybe it's to be healthy. Well, there's always more ways to be healthy. I could improve my sleep. I could improve my eating. I could improve my exercise. I could improve my mental health. I could, it's limitless. And I think that that's a really important distinction, especially kind of in this final episode of like, what's the point of all of this mm -hmm. is to some, some sense say, it's to live this unlimited life, to not set your sights on, you know, the short term and be like, not to say that like a goal of losing weight isn't valuable or reading a book isn't valuable. I'm not saying that, but it's like pushing it to, but what's the purpose of those mm -hmm. things? And that will, those things could serve the greater outcome or the greater purpose that I think that is that that limitless capacity that we have within ours. Yeah, I think that that is so brilliant because essentially in a lot of our therapy sessions, and if you just want to think, you know, even kind of metaphorically, if you could ask for anything, if you could have anything like people coming to therapy kind of are getting the opportunity to say, you know, in regards to who they want to be and where they want to go. But even if you think of it as just as like a genie wish or something, if you could have anything, you'd be setting yourself so short, you'd be selling yourself short, you'd be stunting what you could have. If you just said, I want this very limited goal achieved, I want this amount of money even, or I want to lose this amount of weight, like you said, I want to check this very finite box, when it's just as viable an answer to say, I want to live in this kind of a way, or I want to pursue this type of lifestyle, this type of a person that I want to be. I want to have this type of meaning in my life. And that just kind of like can supply you with satisfaction and, and pursuit endlessly over and over and over. I used to think that, you know, maybe human beings are just built to kind of always notice and be stuck in problems because I mean, we're, we're naturally good at solving problems, but that kind of requires, I got to look for problems. I got to see problems. And I, I think that's how we kind of always think about things. Even if life is relatively good and we have lots of privileges and comforts, it just feels like I'm going to see what's wrong and what I need to fix and what to work on. But this kind of has an answer to that potential doubt It's that sure, maybe we might constantly be looking for the next thing and, and of this mindset of the grass is always greener, but we could choose what greener means and we could actually choose green to be something that actually could always be greener and that we could mm. actually really be working on. It's our own grass and we could make it greener and greener. And actually what green means is to be whatever kind of a person that we want to be or to live whatever kind of life that we want to live. And even as green as it could get, we could always find satisfaction in pursuing more and more and more. And that actually be a really realistic thing rather than just a, somewhere out there, there's this thing that's nice and I want to go own that thing. I know you said you had a question, but I'm sneaking in another question. <laughs> You're really cheating on this last <laughs> final episode. I won't even get anything in for the season. But as you were talking and I, I was thinking about kind of this, like you just kept using the word like limitless. Mm -hmm. There, there was a possible like compound in there. And so I just want to like clear it up because I don't think, I think that there's, this is such an impactful conversation that we're having. Like, I think it's a really meaningful conversation. And so I want to eliminate as many like, confounds as we can. And one of the confounds I think in like pursuing limitless opportunities mm -hmm. is potentially like selfishness hmm. of like self-centeredness or conceitedness or like all of the focus, all of the energy is just about me and becoming like amassing as much power or influence hmm. or whatever that I can. And I would say, at least to me, it seems like what we're trying to get at is purposes beyond that. It's 
in, in some sense, I would say like antithetical to that Absolutely. kind of like accumulation of personal status. How do you see hope as it relates to purpose differently from greed or self conceit or any of those kinds of things well it's the same way that we have to approach therapeutic change i think all this is overlapping and in very similar ways we ourselves are the mechanism of transformation and so obviously greed and things like that are i want to feed myself i want to amass things for myself i want notoriety for my own sake i want maybe even just to constantly chase, you know, some type of carnal happiness or, or pleasure or something like that. And all that is just feeding yourself. But even if you said, I want to feed other people, or I want to change the world, I want to contribute to my community, I want to change history. If you said anything that was actually outward and feeding outward, the only mechanism you have for making that happen is still through yourself. You'd still have to say, well, then that means I need to get this kind of an education, or I need to move these kinds of resources around, or I need to connect and talk to these kinds of people. It's like the same tool is still you. That's the same channel you have to go through. You could use that tool, though, for very different things. I could use $100 for a lot of different things. It could be very selfish things, or it could be very communal and purposeful things. And so I think there's a huge difference there, even if we're going through the same type of mechanism of utility, just like in therapy, the only person sitting in the room, if it's individual therapy, is that person who came to therapy. And so we could work on and pursue something that is directly channeled through them, but doesn't necessarily have to be a, a self-serving, selfish kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, I like that distinction. Uh, I think that, again, it, like it often does comes down to the difference of meaning, right? The behavior might be very similar when you understand when you're intentional about the purpose. Very much, yeah. The behavior all of a sudden means something entirely different. Do I get a chance to? I, I guess, <laughs> I guess. Only if you hurry. But I, I think <laughs> this actually question, I think could be applied retroactively to all of, all of these slices of hope, but I also think it could be packaged into, you know, just here talking about purpose. I don't know if we've ever gotten into, as much as we've talked about all of these things, the specifics kind of on the ground level of what makes a good that thing that we're talking about. If I'm trying, if we're saying here's all the benefits of purpose and here's why you should live your life with purpose and on purpose. What makes a good purpose to be harnessing and attaching and, and to defining your life by? Because I think kind of inherently all of us would be able to say, oh, that sounds like something purposeful. That sounds like something really meaningful. But if I said, you know, I just want to eat pizza, I just want to <laughs> sit at home and eat pizza, somehow that sounds less purposeful. No one would, not many people would automatically say, oh, there's the purpose. There's someone who's living their life with a lot of meaning. So what are the details then that really define this? What What's good purpose? What's hmm. meaningful purpose? I mean, that's a giant question. It is, yeah. <laughs> All yours. <laughs> but I think, I think the way that I'll answer this question, and I don't know if it's what you're hoping for. So you can clarify if you need to. But I think in some sense, it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. The way I would answer it very similarly to how I think a lot of people think about hope is that on one level, I don't know. What I find personally to be purposeful, to be meaningful, might vary greatly from what somebody else might see as purposeful or meaningful. And so on that very basic level, the answer is like, well, I don't know. I don't know what would be purposeful. Just like I think when people think about hope, they're like, I don't know if this thing that I'm shooting for could actually happen. But I think then when we mesh it with all of these other kind of slices of hope that we've talked about, when we talk about like ambition and we talk about awaiting for things and we talk about expecting things and we talk about dreaming things, it becomes... It becomes this like energy filled, meaningful, intentional thing. And so then all of a sudden it becomes really clear and easy to be like, well, yeah, that's worth striving for. And yeah, you should absolutely be expecting that to happen. And so I guess if I take all of that to a different level, I think what we're all, let me be careful because I guess I don't know what everybody is <laughs> hoping for. But I think what it comes down to, I guess the way that I would answer that is to say, I hope it's founded on goodness. 
that when we think about like, what's the point of all of this? What's the point of going to work? What's the point of having families? What's the point of making friends? What's the point? All these just regular mundane activities that we do, they're founded on hope. Every single one of us is hoping to achieve something by talking to the person on the train next to us or not talking to the person on the train next to us. We're all hoping to achieve something. We're all hoping that that behavior will lead to something. And I think if we boil it down, we're most often we're hoping for goodness. We're hoping for things. When we ask in our therapeutic work, when we ask, what are your best hopes? I think I'm constantly astounded at the simplicity. Most often it comes down to, I want to be happy. Mm. I want peace. I want to feel a sense of safety. I want security. I want to feel positive about myself. I want my relationships to be good. All of those things are just, again, I the only word I can kind of find to boil it down to is goodness. I want happiness for me and I want happiness for everybody around me. I want peace for me and I want peace for everybody around me. All of those things could be universally applied and they wouldn't violate anybody else's sense of being or their autonomy. And so I think that's what I would say is like at our core, at our very nature, I guess all of this hope leads to goodness abounding. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's an answer that you were hoping for. I think that's a great answer. And I very much agree with it too. Something that can really take away the layers of explanation that people can have is a question of why, you know, or a question of the meaning behind no matter who you ask in the same way that you're talking, no matter who you ask, if you ask that question enough times and strip away enough layers, even if it's the most difficult person, the most antisocial person, the most violent person, whoever you ask, you know, why are you pursuing the things that you're doing? Why are you behaving the way that you're behaving? Why are you doing what you're doing? And they give an honest answer. And you ask that enough times, well, their answer to that, why is that your answer? Why are, is that a thing you're pursuing? Why is that something that's meaningful to you? And you get through to that all the way far down as far as you can get. It'll boil down to just a handful of the same things for every person on earth. And I think those things like you're describing are things that are 100% understandable, 100% human, 100% good, and not in any way just trying to take away from the world or other people just for the sake of destruction. I think knowing that that's there changes the world that we live in, but also says a lot about uh, purpose in and of itself, because I think that speaks at what purpose is too. It's the stuff under the hood. It's the stuff kind of deep down behind why everyone's doing what they're doing. Yeah. If I ask you one more question. Why not? You might as well. Um, because I think, I think we're... A quota or something. <laughs> well, because we're so close to the end, right, of all of this. So if we take a step back now and we say, we have considered... I believe this is the 15th different slice of hope that we've taken. And if I take a step back and I say to you, what was the purpose of that? Why have we spent an entire season of this podcast, like meticulously dissecting hope and all of its variations? I remember we tried to take a crack at that way in the beginning, and I don't fully remember what our answer was. So I don't know if this is similar or if it's changed. But to me, there's some hope that it's not even that we have to get these conversations right, but that we've just jump started thoughts on these things for ourselves and in our personal lives and in our professional lives, but also for anyone who might come across this, that it might just flag it as here's a thing to think about. Here's a thing that might speak to you in a lot of ways. That might speak to someone you know in a lot of ways. That might change the work that you do in some type of way. Even if that work isn't therapy related work, it could certainly change the way you interact with the world. If I heard a conversation that someone else was having about purpose, at the very least, I would try to answer some of the questions that come up there with how does this relate to me? Is there anything I can take away from that? Does this imply there's some changes that I need to maybe consider in how I'm approaching my life and how I'm doing things. Um, so that's, the, I think, the, the big hope for me is that there are these ripple effects of every person kind of touching this somehow, including myself. Maybe that'll make some type of positive difference. But at the end of the day, it's also just interesting conversation. So whether no one hears it or not, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I think one of the things I really love about that answer, right, is 
again, it kind of comes back to the unknown. I don't know what people are going to make of this conversations of this whole series of things. But I guess it also comes back to what I said before around like goodness. I hope that in a world that is in chaos, that there are wars raging, that there is poverty, that there is famine, that there is homelessness, that there's all of these reasons that we could lose hope. And I think going back to what I said previously around like it kind of all boils down to goodness to me. And I think the more goodness that we can infuse into the world, whether that's into politics or whether that's into war or whether that's into, you know, cultural differences or whatever it ends up being, if we can simply introduce goodness, if we can simply infuse hope, if we could infuse intentionality, if we could infuse purpose like this, it goes back again to that, like there's limitless possibilities. We, we could legitimately change poverty. We could legitimately change politics simply by trying to align all of our actions and intentions with these 15 different additions or iterations of hope. And so I think that's, I didn't go into this process thinking like, this could be a world changing idea. But I think as I look back on all of the different implications that we have thought about and talked about and the reach of all of this, I think this literally would need to be incorporated in every single one of those issues in order for meaningful impact to be had. I like how far stretching that makes this these conversations and this this work. And I 100% agree with them. I don't I think it's impossible to really measure or contain how much of a difference this could make, even if, you know, one person listens to this or something, you know, it, it's really hard to contain. Part of the reason of that, I think, is just to know that hope exists and that there are reasons to hope and that hope can make a difference, even if it's just from two people talking about it and, and all mm -hmm. the anecdotes and, and things that kind of are attached to that, just to know that that exists and that it, it can make a difference and that it has made a difference and that there's people really thinking about it and implementing it. I think that changes the kind of world that we live in. I remember very much when I was, uh, I really liked superhero like TV shows and things like that when I was a kid. And I guess I still do. I watch all the Marvel stuff, <laughs> but I used to watch like all the cartoons and like Batman and Superman and all that kind of stuff. And I always thought it was interesting how black and white it was on TV, that it was just like goodness, just choose goodness. There's always a right, good answer. So just be a good person. And I thought that was more simple than real life really was. But I also thought like, are there people who are just always 100% of the time trying to choose good? And I remember not being totally sure of the answer to that. But the conclusion that I came to over just a long while of, of thinking about it, I think, was that, well, if... I could choose to always try to be good, then that's kind of proof people can choose mm -hmm. to always be good. And that changes the world that you live in, even if by some statistical anomaly, I'm the only person who's ever decided that, which I very much doubt, it still changes the possibility. And I think these conversations have proven the possibilities of things. So if people listen to this and people come across these things, it says, look at what can exist, look at what can be true and just knowing that it can be true means you could take it and do something with that yeah that's really beautiful i think to wrap it all up i think i think that's what i would say kind of at the end of all of this is just that i have this sense of gratitude that you would sit through you know all of Absolutely. these conversations that you would take these things really meaningfully and like break them down in such a way. But also I think just gratitude for those people who are out there who listen, right? We've gotten some mm -hmm. feedback from people who say like, I wait for the next episode and I really thought about it. And again, when you go into this endeavor, you don't really think about so much the ramifications that it could have, mm -hmm. but it is touching that people listen, that people care. And I think that that kind of energy is exactly what we're talking about here. It builds hope, right? Like I now think, okay, well, if they got something out of that, if I got something out of these conversations, it's worth doing and it's worth doing more of. And so I think that's where I would kind of end is just like a sense of gratitude. Thanks everybody for, you know, hanging in there with us throughout this whole season. And hopefully we'll just continue to see the impacts of this grow and blossom and, Absolutely. and spread. I would reiterate that gratitude 
and even start to spark some excitement for where we go next, because I don't think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not done. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about where it's going to go. Any final things you want to say as you wrap it up? If this does nothing for no one, it's done something for me. So I, I think I've really enjoyed these conversations. And I don't really see this as an ending. I kind of just see it as like a pivot, you know, to something else. So gratitude to you too. Thank you. Of course. Absolutely. It's my honor. So in conclusion, we hope that this season has inspired you in some way, has touched you in some way, has helped your hope to grow, and that you can use what you have heard throughout this entire season to achieve your purpose, to spread goodness, to help other people feel and experience the benefits of hope. We'll be back. <laughs> we hope you'll be back too. But until then, go live a purposeful life full of hope.